Good morning, and welcome to worship at Fourth Presbyterian Church on this Lord's Day. It is good to be together in the house of our Lord. Um, If you would, please take a moment to sign the Ritual of Friendship Register in your pew and pass it to your neighbor, and as it comes back down, take a look at the names um, of those on the pew with you and perhaps meet someone new this morning. Uh, And for those of you joining online, we welcome you and invite you to sign our online Friendship Register, which you can access through the YouTube page or the eblast or the worship window of our website. We are continuing our study of the Gospel of John in the Bible class every Sunday. Uh, This morning was led by John himself, uh, or John Bice, anyway. Um, And uh, also next week, Ruth Roper will be back with us to continue that study. You can join us at 915 in the Fellowship Hall or on Zoom for that class. Speaking of the church school hour, uh, on March the 6th, the first Sunday of Lent, we will begin our 2022 Pellet Wern Lecture Series with Professor Martha Moorkish of Columbia Theological Seminary, who will be leading a five-week study on the Epistle of James, or five-week lecture series on the Epistle of James, on which she's recently published a commentary. Our Tuesday morning group used that commentary not too long ago. Uh, She will be with us in person for the first and last of those lectures, and then we'll, um, for the middle three, we'll zoom in from Atlanta. Um, So we will still gather in the fellowship hall where we practiced this morning with the big screens and the sound system, and um, so she'll be uh, with us on Zoom, those middle three, and then we'll join us again for the last lecture. Meanwhile, as we continue through the season of Epiphany, I see that there are still a few Epiphany star words available on the table just outside the sanctuary here by the glass doors. If you haven't picked up one of those, we invite you to do so and to ponder in the year ahead what God might be revealing to you through your Epiphany star word. Uh, Next week, make a note that we are collecting food for United Ministries in our monthly food drive and that we'll be doing that in the worship service. We uh, welcome the Stevenson family this morning, who a little later in the service, uh, we'll be baptizing Caroline May. With those announcements, we let us now turn our hearts and our minds to the worship of God. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit for our call to worship. The word of the Lord to Jeremiah and to us. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. The word of the psalmist and our prayer to God. Lord, you have searched me and known me. The word of the apostle to the church. Now we know only in part. When the complete comes, we will know fully even as we are fully known.
may be seated. Before you were formed, you were known and loved. Confession is not a time to question God's love or faithfulness or our worth, but rather a time for us to fully trust in God's relentless love, knowing that we are safe to be honest with God about our brokenness so that we might more fully know the gift of grace. Trusting in God's love, please join me in the prayer of confession. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, whose face is hidden from us by our sins, and whose mercy we forget in the blindness of our hearts, cleanse us from all our offenses and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires, that with reverent and humble hearts we may draw near to you, confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Beloved community, hear and believe the good news. God's love is deeper and wider than any sin or shortcoming. There is absolutely nothing that can separate us from that love. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and free. may be seated. We are blessed today to be celebrating the sacrament of baptism for Caroline May Stevenson. So at this time I'd like to invite forward the Stevenson family along with Jackie Hiley who will be representing the session. And I'd also like to invite all of our children in the congregation to come forward so that you can have a front row seat for our baptism. Please join us up front. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. From the book of Acts, the promise is for you for your children and to all who are far away, 
everyone whom the Lord our God calls. Baptism is a visible sign of an invisible grace. It is a sign of God's gracious initiative on our behalf. Baptism proclaims the freely given gift of salvation in Jesus Christ, in whom the love of God has been poured out for all people, a love that overcomes our sin, washes away our shame, and conquers death. By water and the Spirit, we are bound together as members of the body of Christ and called to participate in the work of Christ in the world. Jay. On behalf of the session, I present Caroline May Stevenson, daughter of Brian and Emily Stevenson, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Brian and Emily, I invite you to reaffirm your baptismal vows on Caroline's behalf. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? We do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love, do you? We do. With God's help, will you be Christ's faithful disciples? obeying his word and showing his love, will you? We will. Let the whole congregation stand and join together in professing the faith of our baptism in the words of the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> Friends, in whom do you believe? I believe, believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe, I believe in the, the Holy Ghost, Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Be seated. Brian and Emily, do you desire that your child be baptized? Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your child? Do we, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Caroline by word and deed with love and prayer, encouraging her to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of his church? If so, please say, we do. And this question is for you children sitting up front this morning. Will you promise to do your best to be friends of Caroline? And will you do everything you can to help her feel loved when we are together as a family of faith? Will you do that? Right. <laughs> All right. She's excited about that. All righty. Let's, <laughs> let's gather together for prayer. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy us and all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The floods shall not overwhelm us. The deep shall not swallow us up, for Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. So pour out your Holy Spirit, that our sin and shame may be washed away by the love of Christ and that we may be clothed with Christ and claimed as your daughters and sons, no longer Jew or Greek, no longer slave or free, no longer male or female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Yeah, amen. Caroline, for you, Jesus came into the world. For you, he suffered and did battle. For you, he went through the agony of Gethsemane and the darkness of Calvary. For you, he cried, it is fulfilled. For you, he was triumphant over death. For you. And you, little child, do not yet know anything of all this, but thus is confirmed the word of the apostle, we love because God first loved us. Caroline May, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Caroline May, child of the covenant, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, marked as Christ's own forever. O Lord, uphold your dear child, Caroline, that she may continue yours and grow more and more by the power of your Holy Spirit until she comes to be in your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Right. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the newest <laughs> member. Oh, there, she's still there. She's there. The newest member of our church family, Caroline May Stevenson. <laughs> and she is very happy to meet you all. And we will be joining together in the, the role of our church family as we nurture her in the faith and teach her what it means to follow Christ and to be loved by God. <laughs> Brian and Emily, our prayers are with you as you nurture Caroline and her faith in Jesus Christ. And on behalf of the people of Fourth Presbyterian Church, we present her with a first Bible. May God bless you in all of your years together. <laughs> Blessings. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you all. And you all may be seated too.
psalms were meant to be sung, and we thank our choir for leading us in the singing of that psalm today. But as we turn to the reading of Scripture, let us turn to God in prayer. How weighty are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If we try to count them, they are more than the sand. Yet you have made yourself known to us. By your Spirit, in these words of Scripture, search us, O God, and know our hearts. Test us and know our thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in us, and lead us in the way everlasting. We pray through Jesus, who makes you known. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is Psalm 139. Let us listen to God's word to us today. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. For the night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. And in verse 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. In the New Testament, we read from Paul's letter to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. 
When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the first month of this year, in this sanctuary, we have held memorial services for two dear members of the fourth family. Early in the month for Perry Gwynn, and yesterday for, or not yesterday, on Friday for Allison Long, yesterday when I wrote this. These services provide a sacred moment. They provided a sacred moment for those who knew and loved Perry and Allison to sit with and to savor those memories and to bear witness to the Christian hope of reunion in the life to come. In both of these services, stories were shared, whether told by the pastor or by members of the family, stories that brought moments of laughter and of gratitude and sometimes of tears. After Perry's service at the at the reception in the fellowship hall, a photo presentation was running on the screens there that had been shown at Perry's 100th birthday party a couple of years ago. Images of Perry with family and friends who graced his life. At Allison's reception, the family brought a needlepoint that Allison had done of the psalm saying, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it as well as her well-worn Bible full of highlights and underlines and her favorite scripture verses on these colorful index cards that she always had with her held together by metal rings. Hearing these stories and seeing these images and cherished belongings brought moments of recognition born of the knowledge and experience of these two precious lives over many years. First Perry, then Allison, were being remembered by those who knew them as fully as anyone still on this earth could know them. The same kind of knowledge as recognition happens around other such gatherings in the sanctuary, namely at weddings, and we have a few of those coming up. These sacred moments are also accompanied by rehearsal dinners and receptions at which slideshows are often shown, filled with images that bring laughter and tears and joyful recognition of two beloved children the families and friends have watched as they have grown into adulthood. Knowing and being known, loving and being loved is what brings meaning and depth and joy to this human life. And at the root of all this knowing and loving is the knowledge and love of God. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. Now, if we're honest, we'll admit that this can be a little unnerving to be known so well. The psalmist's words could be taken in a few different directions. Are these words a comfort to the soul? Or is the psalmist just trying to get away from this all-knowing gaze of the heavenly Father? Or perhaps both. As a parent, knowing your children so well can be a source of great joy or sometimes of considerable discomfort, especially in observing just how many of your own traits your children have inherited for good or for ill. 
My daughter Langley is now 24 years old. When she was an adolescent, she and I would occasionally get into headbutting mode, we'll call it. And when we did, we learned to recognize in ourselves the same traits that were bothering us in the other. We know how much we are alike. In these moments of recognition, then and now, we like to recall the lyrics of a Bono song about himself and his father, If we weren't so alike, you'd like me a whole lot more. (laughs) Parents and children knowing and loving each other, or a parent-like or childlike relationship, even if not biologically related, is perhaps the core human experience that opens us to the knowledge of God. John Calvin taught that faith is a firm and certain knowledge of God's benevolence toward us. Now, although Calvin is known for his rigorous theology, the knowledge he speaks of here is not the dry academic kind. For for Calvin, faith is recognition, the recognition of God's goodness in Jesus Christ, recognition as a child recognizes the loving face of a parent or a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle or a beloved friend of the family. Calvin also wrote in the opening lines of his Institutes that nearly all the wisdom we possess, that is to say true and sound wisdom, consists of two parts, the knowledge of God and the knowledge of ourselves. In even more ancient days, the Jewish rabbis were taught that the study of the Torah was of the utmost importance because what we human beings were created for is the knowledge of God. The desire to know God is woven into our very essence. Our own mission statement here at Forth speaks of knowledge when we say that Forth is a spiritual home where children know that Jesus loves them because the Bible tells them so. Such knowledge of God is our vision for all God's children. So we have three things going on here. First, our knowledge of God, our recognition of God as a benevolent heavenly father, or as a nurturing heavenly mother, as the prophet Isaiah invites us to imagine, and our desire to know more of God. And then our knowledge of ourselves, which, as it turns out, goes hand in hand with our knowledge of God. And third, which Psalm 139 so profoundly conveys God's perfect knowledge of us. And just when we might imagine that we are responsible for our holy quest for God, or for our children's holy quest for God, we discover that God is searching for us, and that we have been found. Now, this language of God searching for us brings a few images to mind. There's the good shepherd searching for the lost sheep until that sheep is found and brought back into the fold. Then also the image of the psalmist this morning, if I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, suggests that God goes with us wherever our long road may take us so that the finding of us is happening in every moment. There is deep comfort here that there is no length that God will not go to find us and be with us on this winding path of life we travel. It is also interesting that the word searched in the psalm may also be translated as examined. O Lord, you have examined me and known me. This is a more up-close, intimate sort of knowing. This is the kind of knowing that might make us uncomfortable. The language of God's knowing us even turns physical in the psalmist's description. For you, it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. 
the wonder of our physicality, the mystery and beauty of the human body, the delicate and miraculous natural system of life that we are, becomes for the psalmist a mesmerizing meditation on the vast wonder of God's infinite thoughts. And so the psalm invites us into a dance of knowing God's knowledge of us, our knowledge of ourselves, and our knowledge of God. And it's not always clear which is which in this mysterious dance of knowing. And although we are known so well and so completely by God, we soon discover that in trying to know God, our little cup of knowledge is quickly overflowing Unable to contain the vast sums of all God's thoughts, I try to count them and they are more than the grains of the sand. To know God, someone said, is to have our breath taken away and then to have it restored. Today at the baptismal font in the sacrament of baptism for little Caroline, we have proclaimed the mystery of knowing and being known by God. At the font, we proclaim the perfect love of God who gives us life. At the font, we proclaim that wherever the journey of life takes little Caroline, God will be with her. Even in those times when she is not the least bit aware of God. Even in the times when she cannot or will not believe it, God goes with her, and God will find her in every place, in every time. The love of God for Caroline and for all of us will endure always and everywhere, because love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. So if God is love, then God bears all things with us and for us. God believes in us in all things. God hopes all things for us when our hope is lost. Because hope is not a mere wish. Hope is an assurance grounded in God's truth about us. And God's love endures all things for our sake. God's love goes the distance for us, even the distance to the cross. God's love never ends. As we proclaimed to Caroline in her baptism, little Caroline uh, cannot yet really know this love not in any intellectual way, but she is beginning to know this love in her recognition of the faces and voices and touch of her parents, if not the pastor's face, that was a little disconcerting, but (laughs) of her parents and the voices and the faces and the touch of those around her who nurture her. And one day, if perhaps Caroline stands here in this sanctuary or some other sanctuary to be married, we can hope that her knowledge of God's love will have grown deeper. And when she sits here or in some other sanctuary to grieve the loss of a loved one, we can hope that her knowledge of God will have grown deeper still. This knowledge of God, always imperfect, will sustain her as it sustains us, because no matter how fully we know God, we are always fully known by God, who hymns us in, behind and before, wherever we go. And today, standing before the waters of baptism, we proclaim that what is true for little Caroline is true for us. The God we seek here on earth, we will one day see face to face. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now we know only in part. Then we will know fully, even as we have been fully known. For this faith, this hope, this love, thanks be to God.
with this good news to share, the good news of God's knowledge and love of us and of all the world, we gather. We gather in this place to be the community that bears witness to good news. And so let us also bring our gifts to support the work of this community, the mission of the good news of Jesus Christ. Let us present our offerings to God. be seated. As we bring the needs of the church, the world, and all in need to God's loving care, I invite you all to join in a response. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, you'll respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, you promise to hear us when we pray to you in his name. Confident in your love and mercy, we offer our prayer. Empower the church throughout the world in its life and witness. Break down the barriers that divide, that united in your truth and love, the church may confess your name, share one baptism, sit together at one table, and serve you in one common ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the rulers of the nations. Move them to set aside their fear, greed, and vain ambition. Inspire them to strive for peace and justice, that all your children may dwell securely, free of war and injustice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear the cries of the world's hungry and suffering. Give us who consume most of the earth's resources the will to reorder our lives, that all may have their rightful share of food, medical care, and shelter, and so have the necessities of a life of dignity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Restore among us a love of the earth you created for our home. Help us put an end to ravishing its land, air, and waters, and give us respect for all your creatures, that living in harmony with everything you have made, your whole creation may resound in an anthem of praise to your glorious name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Renew our nation in the ways of justice and peace. Guide those who make and administer our laws to build a society based on trust, integrity, justice, and responsibility. Erase prejudices that oppress. Free us from crime and violence. Teach our youth their value. Give us all a new vision of a life of harmony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen this congregation in its work and worship. Fill our hearts with your self-giving love, that our voices may speak your praise, and our lives may conform to the image of your Son. Nourish us with your word and sacraments, that we may faithfully minister in your name, and witness to your love and grace for all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Look with compassion on all who suffer. Support with your love those with incurable and stigmatized diseases, those unjustly imprisoned, those denied dignity, those who live without hope, those who are homeless or abandoned. As you have moved toward us in love, so lead us to be present with them in their suffering in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain those among us who need your healing touch. Make the sick whole. Give hope to the dying. Comfort those who mourn. Uphold all who suffer in body or mind. Not only those we know and love, but also those known only to you, that they may know the peace and joy of your supporting care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, in your loving purpose, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes. In all things for which we pray, give us the will to seek to bring them about for the sake of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Where can we go from God's Spirit? God knows when we sit down and when we rise up and is acquainted with all our ways. So as we go from here on our path, let us also grow in the knowledge of God and of ourselves and in the assurance that the one who knows us fully loves us eternally. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with each one of you now and forever. Amen.